but the stress that weighing on your brain. It was me, a boogie, yeah, yeah, why she lucky? Ride down road, has it got ugly? Waving your hand out the window, check yourself, uh. How's it going everybody? My name is Swanee and welcome back to another video. Guys, I am so excited to get into season four. It's like, you guys have been just hyping it up for so long and although the first three seasons were really, really good, it has not gotten as much hype as season four and I honestly just wanna jump right in, but I am gonna do a little bit of recap first just because, you know, for the sake of continuity, I always do a recap. And if this is your first video of mine and you haven't seen the show in a while, then this is just, you know, a good refresher before we get right in. So the last episode actually ended a little bittersweet. You know, we finally made it to the sea. Armin, Mikasa, the crew, their first time seeing the ocean and it was really nice the visuals were beautiful wit studio did an amazing job they made the ocean look good they made seashells look good um there was one thing i saw in the comments which i'll get to in a minute but the whole entire scene was executed so perfectly and then my heart kind of got ripped out a little bit when aaron just couldn't enjoy the moment i understand it just sucks because that was the second time Aaron's been there, technically, because he lived the first one through Grisha's memories. So, you know, he's already gotten his life, you know, his entire life with Armin. You know, they've been wanting to go see the sea. Every time Armin's, you know, ripped open the Titan to, to talk to him, he inspires him with the sea. And same thing with Aaron. Aaron has inspired Armin with the sea as well. So it's just, it sucks that, you know, by the time he finally gets there, it's been ruined because of the events that took place on the wall with Grisha, you know, and Kruger and everything that happened there. So while everyone's enjoying it for the first time, you know, Mikasa and Armin, cute as ever, smiling at each other, Hanji splashing around, Connie, Jean, and Sasha are goofing off, of course. I'd love to see it. It was, it was very, very nice. Seeing them authentically be able to enjoy themselves made me so happy. And then, you know, we kind of pan over to Aaron and, you know, he's stoically looking past the sea. And he says, you know, if we kill our enemies over there, will we finally be free? Um, very bittersweet. He, you know, like I said, I kind of just wish that he could have enjoyed it because he's been wanting to see it for so long. And, you know, as a viewer, we finally get there. It just, it just sucks because I understand where he's coming from and there's really nothing I can do about it. You know, it's not like... I can say, yeah, but Aaron, what about this? But what about that? But it's like, you know, the fact is the fact is that cruelty is throughout the world and it is on the other side of the ocean. Their dream of freedom being on the other side of the ocean was just squashed. I mean, it's just the truth. It's the cold, hard truth. And it just, it's just one of those things where, you know, ignorance is bliss, right? You know, Mikasa, Armin, and the squad don't really know what's on the other side. Yeah, Aaron has seen Marley firsthand, but it was such a beautiful scene. I just had to do an edit. And I honestly think the edits are really fun. Um, they take longer than the memes, but I don't know, I get more satisfaction out of them. And unfortunately, I couldn't post the full version of that intro to YouTube because the music got copyrighted. Copyright? Co copyrighted? So the full version, as always, is on Patreon. But on Patreon, I'm actually able to upload, you know, all my memes and all my edits with the actual music. Sometimes if I can find a substitute song for the edit, I'll do that. But if it's like an edit made for that song and I can't change it then you know i can only upload it to patreon i have to cut it out for youtube but it was actually the second part of the intro that was my favorite part so it kind of sucks that i had to cut it out for youtube but yeah anyway so that's a little bit of a ending episode recap um i'm not gonna go over a whole lot just because you, know, you guys have already seen the show and you guys said you guys said whatever i theorize whatever i think for season four will not be right which goes into my first point i was actually planning on doing a swanee's notebook this was supposed to be like a giant video but when i actually sat down to theorize i couldn't think of anything no idea for predictions of season four and no idea or no way to theorize on kruger the whole armin and mikasa thing just because none of it makes sense i just don't know i think this is the first time in the entire show where i have no points to go off of no conspiracies nothing to build off of the only thing i could think of was if kruger touched dinah dinah and kruger came into contact on the voyage to paradis then maybe he could have gotten some memories, but that only applies to the founding Titan, right? So Aaron has the founding Titan, you know, Historia touches his back, he gets memories. Because in the jail scene from the last episode or two episodes ago, Aaron said that all thoughts and memories are passed through the paths 
through the coordinate, which is the Founding Titan. So all the memories and all the thoughts pass through those paths, which is the Founding Titan, and Kruger doesn't have the Founding Titan. If he and Dinah were to come into contact, then there's there's no way to kind of activate the powers of the Founding because he doesn't have it yet. My one theory that I was like, oh, I was like, man, this is good. I'm like, you know, you know what? I'm sure they're going to dive into this into the next episode. Dinah and Kruger came into contact, but that doesn't even make sense. So I can't even go off that. And I have no idea for season four predictions, just because my one prediction that I did have, which I said in the last Swanee's Notebook, was the cure. So if Grisha had the antidote or cure in the basement, then season four, at least for me, was going to be them, you know, turning people from Titans back to humans and Zeke, Reiner and Quad were going to basically, you know, come and stop them. But it seems it seems like the last few episodes have put a complete stop on whatever it was that I was thinking. Um, yeah, I just I just have no idea. Like I said, this is the first time where. I'm actually lost. I'm sorry. I know you guys were kind of expecting a little bit of a Swanee's Notebook, but I did ask cannot think of a thing. Guys, I'll say this till the day I die. I appreciate all of your comments. I've read them all. You know, a lot of them give insight, clarification, a lot of critiques, things that I want, you know, things that inspire discussion. A few of you guys have really kind words for me, uh, you know, about the edits and the reactions and the words. And honestly, it, it motivates me to keep going and I love it. On top of the fact that you guys are goaded and, you know, absolutely amazing, it's really helped deepen the discussion and build on top of the whole experience. And honestly, I'm so grateful. And the questions too have also helped to drive the discussion and helped you know, widen my perspective. There's been a few comments that, you know, have, have asked questions and I'll answer them in the next episode. And it just, like I said, it just helps the experience and having you guys here makes it so much better. So I have a question that at the time I had no idea, but after a little bit of thinking and after rewatching the last few episodes where we kind of, you know, got all the information about Marley, I was able to come up with an answer. And the question is, is how come Marley didn't send all seven Titans, their full military fleet, their thousands of troops, you know, send all of their equipment, everything Thing, when they knew that there was no way the Survey Corps could combat it or, you know, basically Paradis didn't really have anything to... I mean, we don't have an army, right? We have the Survey Corps, the garrison, the military police, the internal military police. We don't, we don't have an army. We have... We only have a couple of small groups that, you know, basically runs things in the wall. So at first I was like, oh damn, that's a really good question. How come they just didn't storm in and basically take the founding? And my answer to that question is from episode 20, where the king left a warning 80 years ago. If you ever interfere with us, the millions upon millions of titans in the walls will flatten the entire world. As long as the threat exists, no one will confront them. I think with Marley knowing the fact that the founding titan is in the walls, that if they were to bring a full fleet inward, I mean, you can see a full fleet coming, especially, you know, we have access on top of the walls. We can see, you know, decently far distances. If we saw that, it would only take a short amount of time before the founding Titan was like, oh damn, like, you know, a full fleet's coming. It's time to let loose all these Titans in the walls. So instead they basically send in a few soldiers to sneak in, to disguise themselves as a troop, to send, you know, kid warriors to blend in with a kid group, you know, it's not, not many people would question that. Oh my god, a colossal titan and the armor titan, you know, these big ass things that are just storming the walls and the gates. My initial thought was that they were adults, as probably everyone else did, but when it was revealed, they were actually kids, and, you know, I mean, that sucks for the audience POV, because you're like, oh my, bro, how are you gonna send kids to do your bidding, right? But, you know, after the information and the flashbacks that we got from the last few episodes, we saw that, you know, kids are very... You know, easy to persuade, very easy to convince. Kids are also easier to manipulate. So to send them in tactically and as spies to basically disguise themselves, you know, amongst our group uh, was actually very smart. On top of the fact that should Marley send their entire fleet, let's say that they're just shooting random people. And let's say they happen to hit the founding Titan, right? Let's say they happen to hit the founding Titan and as we saw, if you die with the power, then it goes to another unborn Eldian baby. So what's the point of sending in this whole fleet, accidentally killing the founding Titan, and then what are you there for? You know what I'm saying? So, so basically, instead of spread shooting and happening to kill the founding Titan, you send in a few spies that, you know, can probe around, poke around, that can see where the founding Titan is. And honestly, now that I think about it, Reiner and Bert's initial attack might have just, even though, yes, the way that they disappeared too, that initial attack was probably just a probe. They're like, hey, if we transform and break these walls, then the Founding Titan, you know, may transform as well. So they might have even thought that the Founding Titan would have transformed right then and there to fight them. So to answer your question, it would have been much safer, much easier, and you could have gotten a jump on the Founding. So I think it was for the sake of not triggering the threat, 
and to not accidentally kill the founding and to probe around and see you know where it is that way you know you can actually get it but yeah guys that's all i have for a recap i just couldn't theorize anything and what i could theorize just had too many holes and there was just no point in even you know going through with it i had a few you know theories a few points but but i was able to pick them apart pretty fast and there's just no point guys i'm so excited to get into season four it's not even funny i know you guys have been hyping it up i've been ready you guys have saying that the prologue is over and it is about to start i did hear that the animation changes and i've really grown to love wit studios animation so i'm kind of hoping that you know this one doesn't really botch it but you guys did say that this is the best season and i haven't heard any complaints that were like oh yeah the animation style changed and it sucks i'm not sure if that was to prevent me from having any preconceived notions or if you guys wanted, wanted me to just go in blind but yeah i hope it's really good guys i'm dying to get into it i'm so tired of talking i'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me talk and just want to get into the reaction so with all that being said without further ado let's get right into the episode oh my god Oh my god, the um... The music! Bro! What is happening? Okay, so they're Eldian. だな。俺たちが4年も戦争してるってことを覚えてるか。お前たち。いや、I <笑> I know I missed something right there, but... <laughs> this kid looks like Bert. Udo. Okay. And Is, is there... Oh my god, guys, I'm sorry. Reiner. Got a little got a little goatee going? Okay. Dude, I love the way they animated Reiner. He looks really good. I feel like I'm just gonna comment a lot on the animation. I'll try not to though, just because, you know, it's a different animation studio. Of course there's some differences, but Reiner looks pretty good. いったいだれが選ばれるんだろうね。なんだガビ。自分の最初は他に言えって口ばかり。専業なエルディア人だけだぞ。この戦いに勝って世界に証明する。私は負けない。私が主要国からみんなを解放する。It's an admirable dream. Wanting to free people from the internment zone. We don't want more people getting eaten by dogs, that's for sure. だけです。何か考えがありそうだな。コルト。ここで、アギタとシャリキを話します。ジョーエンカート。ジョーエンカート。<laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's crazy. Well, since it's buffering, I might as well just use this time. But I don't know if you, I don't know if any of you ever played the Battlefield One campaign. But in one of the missions, you had to stop an armored train, and I mean, it's like this. <laughs> I also guess this is a good time to write some stuff down. So, okay, so we got Jaw and Cart. We got Gabby, Udo. I remember Udo because my favorite Japanese noodle is udon. I like udon a lot. Fun fact. Udo. Okay, so we got Gabby, Falco, Udo. I know they said that the the tall blonde kid's name, but Jaw and Cart. I don't, I don't remember their names either. Also, as of right now, we are the Marley POV. I also don't even remember what the objective was because I'm just so just shocked right now, bro. <laughs> Fortunately, it's buffering on the screen, but 
It says they're the allied forces. It is so weird to saying technology to this capacity. Also, that entire just first scene just completely threw me off. Sorry about it buffering. Hopefully, it's not going to happen again. Wow, Suruka in one shot. Wait, alright, sorry for pausing. I'm gonna try not to pause too much in this episode, but I just wanted to get this straight before I continue. We're in the future, so this is a time skip. Nine years. So, yeah, so I'm gonna assume that the nine years starts from when they first breached the walls in, like, episode one. Because it can't be nine years from where we left off, because then Aaron would be dead, and... I mean, Aaron's the main character. They're not... <laughs> he's not dead. I, I think six years had passed since the end of season three. Three years have passed. So we're three years ahead right now? Okay. Wow. Everybody looks wrecked. Oh. Yeah, war is... Oh, God. Yeah, war is no joke. Oh my god! Oh. Oh, Zeke is here too? Okay. I want to see what. I'm looking forward to seeing what the animation style change looks like. I'm actually really excited to see what everyone looks like. ダメ。私なら一人で走行列車を無力化できます。しかもすごく可愛いし。だから私が成功すれば800人のエルディア兵を。いや、she's a Okay, so she she wants to be the armored. God, this is so crazy. It's such a different vibe from the first few seasons. Damn, everybody's human, man. It's not easy to take the shot. <laughs> she got that kind of arm? Is she gonna throw that? No. Not from that far. Oh, she stands up. Okay. Oh my god. Wow, buffering, amazing, love buffering. Wow, dude, I, okay, so I thought she was gonna throw it from laying down. Um, I was like, there's, dude, there's no way you have that angle to where if you're laying down on your stomach, you can like side toss it like that. But she stood up. If she, I, I didn't think she was gonna stand up just because if she did, you see she's gonna throw a whole bunch of grenades and she, she was gonna get shot. But uh, I think for the sake of the show, they, they didn't do that. Okay, this buffering is really annoying. The one episode where I don't wanna pause, it pauses. But I'm actually impressed though she was able to get that off. Just a quick little diagnosis. I think Gabby is actually really smart. For one, she used a little bit of re reverse psychology on the commander to let her, you know, actually risk her life and then she used actually really smart psychology and you know taking off her uniform not naked naked but she's pretty much naked right she's wearing her like undergarments whatever and when she was walking towards them and just her undergarments it kind of just made her look like a human and not the evil other side right so there she's not the evil enemy she's just a human she's just a woman right at first, they said, oh my god, it's a woman, not it's an Eldian, or uh, a Marlian, or, you know, whoever, it's just a woman. Which makes sense as to why it was so hard for them to shoot, and which is why they were like, oh, no, I don't want to shoot, you know, and how about you shoot? And it's like, well, uh, and they just, they hesitated. The world gives you a label, it puts you in a category, you know, if, if you are something, 
then you are then correlated to something else. But if you take all that off, you are just a human being. And I think that's why it was so hard for them to kill her. I'm also trying to, you know, push off a little time in talking because I want the video to fully render because I don't want it to buffer anymore. But yeah, anyway. Wow. Wow. Bro! That thing is crazy looking. Oh, it's cr bro, it's freaking strong. I completely just missed Zeke there. I swear they showed it for like half a second. Also, weird thing too is because we're in Marley's POV, like, versus these people, like, I want to root for them. Wow. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Bro! This is the quad? Oh my god, yeah, this is Battlefield 1 vibes. Dude, it is equipped with turrets. Holy shit! Wow. Good kid. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Dude, the turrets on it are insane. Everyone's Bro, Zeke looks really cool too. What? Oh my God. Is that dumb? So he just- he just shouts? Bro, I'm- Oh my god, it's buffering again. Well, at least it's a good time to- Dude, okay, so Zeke just shouts and they turn into titans. Okay, so Zeke shouting triggers titan transformation. Oh, that's probably why they did it on the airship, right? Okay, so it took Eldian people, put them on the airship. That way, when Zeke shouts, they turn into Titans. So if Zeke was in the trenches and he would have shouted, then everyone who was Eldian there would have transformed, is what I'm going with right now. Um, which, all, which makes sense on why they did it from the airship. Um, oh, wait, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense either. Well, I mean, it, that could that could be true, but everyone was, like, retreating as if they knew what was going to happen. Maybe they just... I don't know. <laughs> guys, I'm, there's there's no point in theorizing this early on in the season. Which, by the way, guys, give me a few episodes before I can actually get a few things to start theorizing on. There might not be another Swanee Snowpoke for a little bit. Just because, after seeing those last three episodes, there's really nothing to build off of. Dude, that is really interesting. Also, Zeke looks pretty sick, too. The way... I like this animation style. Alright, so it's done buffering. And of course, dude, the one episode I want to watch all the way through, it just happens to stop me. At least it's a good time to discuss the, the mayhem that is unfolding. Holy shit. Wow. 
お前らエルディア人に。<laughs> Dude, it is so weird seeing Titans just get murked that easily. Kinetic bombardment. Dude, he looks cool. <laughs> Understandable. Looks cool as shit, bro. The detail. It's so different, but I but I like it. Bro, it just went through two layers. Oh my god, dude. The weaponry is insane. Oh shit! Bro, that thing is so crazy looking. Wow, that steel must be strong. That's massive brain for using it as a shield. <laughs> Dude, even the inside of the Titan POV is really cool. Mm. Still just as lanky. I guess it doesn't feel too good to have him to have it thrown back at you or shot back at but it don't matter wow yeah we bro if if his throat can take out that there we didn't we didn't have a chance to actually beat him without casualty mid east allied マーレの勝利で終結した。だが世界は巨人の力が全てを支配する時代。ゲームランナーがレックスあることを知られ、マーレは一刻も早く始祖の巨人を手に入れる必要。おお、ミステリーマン。Wow, guys, that this episode was amazing. I'll, I'll admit I was a little worried about the animation change just because Wit did such a good job. But honestly, I like this animation style because it adds like the, like the detail with the armor. I don't really know how to explain it. I think it's the lines too. I noticed the lines on the eyes of the characters. It like added depth. I'm also having a difficult time articulating my words with what I'm thinking. This animation style almost seems mature or like adult-like. Whereas Wit Studio, although yes, did an amazing job and dude i mean the odm scenes and literally everything about that but everything about the first few seasons were nothing short but perfect 
this just adds a different vibe, a different level of detail. I, again, I'm having difficulty explaining what I'm trying to say, but I like it. It definitely fits the war vibe, and I think this entire episode was executed pretty well. Although I was very confused at the beginning. Also, sorry for the buffering. I couldn't really do anything about that. I don't know. My, bro, I've never had any buffering issue for as long as I've done this show. But at least through a few of the buffering points, I was able to you know, actually figure out what time it was, you know, where we were, what was happening. Again, because you know, I was so lost in the beginning. Okay, so I have jaw and cart. The cart being the quad and it had all the turrets on it. It had like a like a metal mask on it, which was really cool. I guess because I saw the cart with luggage, I just assumed that was all it was good for. I didn't even think about, you know, strapping it with guns, but hey, I mean, it works. Also the jaw, dude, that thing looks insane. I mean, we saw it rip up the railroad with its mouth. So obviously it's got a strong jaw. We saw it jumping around uh, from building to building. Also, I see what the commander was talking about when he was like, yo, like it's not a good idea to send out, you know, our Titans. We've already lost a couple. We lost the female and Colossal. And it's not a good idea to just casually send them out. Um, and at first I was like, oh, what's the problem? It's just some guns. And then I saw, dude, okay, so that anti-Titan uh, cannon or whatever shot like through his hand or through his wrist I forgot what it was and into his um his front delt and or his like side peck so that anti-titan weaponry was able to pierce two layers of Reiner's armor which is crazy to think about at first I was thinking like why does this feel so weird when all the pure titans and Reiner was just getting absolutely worked and it's because for us, it takes so long. It takes so much. It takes us a thousand Thunder Spears. It takes us, you know, slicing and dicing. It takes us Aaron getting into a grappling match with Reiner. It feels like we fight tooth and nail to get these Titans. And then, you know, they go up against these guys and it's just like, all right, pulling trigger and they're just getting wrecked. So that whole perspective was really interesting to see. Also, psychology wise, I, I noticed because we were on Marley's POV and we were Marley fighting, you know, an enemy, an enemy who we didn't know. When they were sending in Zeke and Reiner, I almost kind of felt this, like, want to, like, cheer them on. Which is actually a really hard concept for me to wrap my head around. We don't have Mikasa and Armin and Eren there. You know what it is? Because we don't have Mikasa, Eren, and Armin, it's a different animation style. And it's been a time skip, and we're facing people who we don't know. I'm almost like taken out of our show, Attack on Titan, and into something else. And it almost like, because it was such a drastic change, right? The military style, the weaponry, the technology, the animation style, it it almost it, it almost felt like I was, you know, in a different world. So when Reiner and Zeke, people who I was already familiar with, came in, I almost feel, felt this sense of like, you know, oh yeah, like go, like, go get them. You know, I was, I was almost rooting for them, which is kind of fucking with me right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm, it's also not that extreme to the point where I'm like, yeah, go Ryan or go Zeke. Like you guys were the best. Hell yeah. It's, it was just like, it was weird how in that moment I was like, almost like, I was almost feeling a nudge or a pull where I'm like, yeah, like go, like go get him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's a weird thing. Um, I don't know if it's all those external factors put together. I also think because we started out in Falco's perspective, you know, when the two girls and guy were talking to us, it was to us, right? Like our camera POV was Falco. So when she was like, hey, like, you know, we've been in a war for four years, like wake up where you've been. It almost kind of like, yes, it put me into Falco's shoes. So from that point on, I felt like I was Falco. I'm I'm sure that was intentional, uh, which is very well done because I think that's actually why I started to feel that like pull into like rooting for them. And also seeing Falco, you know, wanting to help that guy with the tourniquet and save that guy. I'm actually surprised this episode didn't just hit me with like, you know, Ooh, new, flashy, interesting shock factor. It hit me with like a, it almost hit me in like a gravitational way, which I don't really, what does that even mean? I don't know, but it makes sense in my head. So I'm, and it hits me in a gravitational way. That's what I'm going with. Okay, so yes, yeah, so we got Gabby, Falco, and Udo. And the tall blonde kid's name is Colt. So we have Gabby, who's the confident one. You know, there's a little bit of cockiness to her. Um, she's very determined. She was able to convince the commander. She said, hey, like, you know, I got this. I can take out the armor train by myself. I was a little skeptical. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I don't know about that. But, you know, it was a massive brain idea. Like I said in the episode, you know, take off your uniform, take off anything that labels you and strip you down to the most human level. And when she did that psychologically, the other side couldn't really get that shot off. He was like, no, you take it. No, you take it. Like, no, I'm not going to shoot her, you know? And the commander said that this war is happening nine years after the Colossal uh, and female were lost. So 
that was what six years by the end of season three so it's been about three years that's that's what i'm getting out of it it, it could i could be wrong it could be three four five two years i don't know i'm pretty sure three's right I, it's it's a pretty scuffed calculation but if you guys want to correct me in the comments absolutely go for it um, i know it helps with context and again helps deepen my understanding and, and my last note being that zeke shouting triggers titan transformation so I, so i'm gonna assume that that's just a trait specific to him and I think he did it in the airship because if he yells around Eldians and they transform, I'm assuming Reiner didn't transform because he's the exception because he's also an intelligent Titan. But I'm assuming if he shouts, then Eldians turn to Titans. Yeah, wow, that's really interesting. There towards the end, Zeke did get a little taste of his own medicine. I mean, it didn't last because he ended up just bodying those ships. But, you know, when they fired back at him, those spread shots, you know. Reiner took the hit, by the way. Didn't look too good by the end. I mean, his armor can take it, but not the anti-Titan stuff. But yeah, guys, the animation style looked really clean. Uh, armored looked cool. Beast still just as lanky, but looked, you know, a little more defined. Zeke and Reiner's character animation look, dude, they look pretty damn good. I know, again, I was expecting that when I'd see them, I'd be, you know, bitter, but I mean, they made them look pretty cool. And I also think on my previous point, how psychologically, you know, I'm a Marleyan, right? I'm Falco and his POV, and it's us against the Mideast. And because I said psychologically how I was Falco and I was on the side of Marley, that like when I saw Reiner and Zeke, I was like, damn, you know, they look cool. But yeah, this overall gravitational vibe, like I said, that I'm feeling is um, definitely odd. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it, but I think that just goes to show that everybody is human and it's really not about sides, despite me having a preferred side. You know, maybe that's what it is too. Maybe everyone, everyone's human and everyone has sides, but it's just what you prefer. Therefore, no one in the end is right or wrong. Everyone's wrong and everyone's right. It all just depends on what side you fight for. I think that's, you know, I think it's just a good way of putting it. But yeah, guys, that was an amazing episode. Really enjoyed it. I don't have a whole lot to theorize on, but I'm glad we got some action right off the bat. That was pretty nice. Uh, I know every single season's first episode is typically a banger, so, so this one did not disappoint. I actually really enjoyed it, despite, you know, I say despite, but despite us being on Marley's side, I, I enjoyed that episode a lot from a cinematic standpoint and, you know, from being in the shoes of Falco. Super solid episode. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, if you guys want the full reaction of it, it'll be on Patreon. I also have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It'd be greatly appreciated. All right, hope you all have a good one.